Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to the August Festival of Creativity. This time I am doing an ATC for the August Art Sherpa ATC Club. The theme is festival. So I found this really cool photograph on unsplash.com and I've got it linked down below. What I've done is I have printed it to the size of my ATC card and I went ahead and covered the back of it with graphite and so that way I can just transfer this straight onto the 140 pound watercolor paper that I'm using. This is just a um, I think this is Strathmore 400, 140 pound watercolor paper. So it's a nice watercolor paper and it is a wood pulp paper and it doesn't take rubbing on it a lot, but it takes some, some abuse. I'm not a watercolorist, but I am learning to be one. I am using the Karen Dosh uh, Neo Color 2s. I received five of these colors from the Art Sherpa in my, of the box. It's, it's a lot of fun. If you're ready for silliness and festival fun time, go check that out. It's going to be fun. There's bubbles. All right. Then I've got some of my husband's Karen Dosh, uh, his tray of them that he had and the five that he got in his art experience box too. So we've got quite an array of colors here. And there are a few duplicate colors. You know, I figured though there's enough of those colors here to make this really pretty drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly trace this on. So here we are. Didn't take very long to trace this on at all. I'm going to be putting in the boy in silhouette. There's going to be a bit, I forgot something though. So I'll just have to draw it. I forgot the little tray. That the fire is on. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and do this a lot like a watercolor. So I'm just going to scribble these Neocolor 2s out onto my Karen Dosh palette. So I have the, let's see, this is cobalt blue. I need the yellow, which is the yellow. I need the purple, which is violet. I need some of the magenta. I'm going to take some white also, and I might give myself two spots of white. And I can always add more. I'm setting the colors that I'm using over to the side so I'll be able to pick them up easily. And then looking at his shirt, I could use some of this olive green, I think. I'm not putting the extra balloons in because I don't have a full person here to be going with. So I think I'm just going to do it this way. Um, and maybe the orange just to make it easier to get this in. I could do it with just the magenta and the yellow, but I think I want the orange also. All right. All right, so the brushes I'm going to use, uh, potentially, the number one mono monogram liner by Silver Brush Company, the 10 over zero 
ultra mini shader potentially some of the sterling studio silver brights a number two and a number zero and the sterling uh, the silver brush company black pearls in number two as a bright and number two as a filbert so I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just using the brushes because these are the brushes I have and I'm really enjoying them. So we're going to start off here by wetting this background and getting some of the blue going in, starting off darker and working our way to light as we come down. So I'm just going to liquefy some of that paint, some of that pigment we're going to go really dark up here at the top. And we're going to work our way around and down. And we're just going to, we're basically going to color book this one, guys. It's just, it's easy, it's fun, and this is something relaxing to do. I have gone back to work for the school year now, so, you know, things are, things are getting busy at work, doing the technology, getting computers ready to go. I am going to pick up a tiny bit of the purple and start working that into the sky here a little bit. in this lower bit and then a bit of the magenta and I'm kind of I'm being a bit precious around there but I'm not being totally uh, totally worried about how these colors are going in. It's, it's a sunset. So it's sunset time. And I will probably work a bit of that up just because it makes an interesting effect. I like these Neo colors. They're fun to use. Oh, let's see here. I guess I, I need to use, maybe I'll put the purple and the blue together to make my mountain instead of using that blue right there. So that's getting to be a darker color right here. And yep, I just worked it right into some of that lighter color that's already wet and that's just the way that works out sometimes things things will bleed a little bit that's okay you know we're we're experimenting when we're doing things on ATC cards we have permission to experiment and see what works for us See, I want to put a little bit more of that blue down in here. But I'm just tapping it in and letting it bleed out. See how that's going? That's that's good. Now, I whoa, that's that's really dark. So I think I am going to go like this and lighten it up. The neo colors lighten up really fast. The colors don't grab onto the paper super quick. They are pretty liftable. But this paper is not exactly the best for going in and lifting a lot. So let's see. And then the water down below. I'm going to leave some space here. I'm not going to go all the way up to the edge of the mountain. And there is going to be more color down in this area. 
of the water. And I'll put some type of shading or something going on down here to disguise that pencil line that's still there. But, you know, we may just give it a little extra, a little extra magenta there. This is looking really pretty already. Now this is a festival. They're at a festival of lights and many times these types of candle lanterns or fire type lanterns, they're mini hot air balloons and they will generally release them over lakes and they only go up for a certain amount of time. The uh, fuel that's in them doesn't last a long time so it will go up and it will float around for a while and then it will come down into the lake at least that's their hope um, I couldn't imagine anybody being able to let something like that go at this time of year <laughs> at least not here because it's so dry we have a lot of fires going on in the Pacific Northwest right now, all the way from Canada, across Washington and down Oregon and into California. So letting off candle lanterns probably isn't what we would be getting to do. But it's, it's a memory in memory of people who have passed or in memory of occasions that have happened. All right. So now I'm looking at this going, okay, I'm going to have to flip it upside down for a second because I need to kind of clean off and wet the arm right there but I needed to get that purple off of there because I'm going to take a bit of this orange so that he can have that orange glow on his arm. And it actually comes down like that. And then there's a bit of this orange glow on the side of his head and his ear. and onto his neck. And even, even a little bit on the edge of his shirt, right up there. But he's mostly going to be in silhouette. So I think that's going to make it kind of fun here. Now there's that orange glow that's tempered just ever so slightly, maybe with a little bit of the magenta. I want to go ahead and start getting the inside of the balloon. I'm going to try it with this brush and if it doesn't work I can, ooh that's way too, way too dark and that brush is too big. So we're going to set that brush over to the side, we're rinsed it out, dry it off and I will grab my ultra mini shader. I'm wiping the water that's sets on the ferrule off on a paper towel so it doesn't go rolling down onto the painting. But we need mostly that orange there, just a touch of the magenta in it. Just sort of give it a little bit of some shading Just like that. Not a ton, not a lot. We're not, we are not being slaves to the details. We're doing this so small, you know, that when you do things small, you have to start leaving out some details or it's just going to drive you crazy. 
So like the flame here, I'm going to grab some of that bright yellow and drop some of that right in there on the flame. I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of that black and a, with a bit of the orange to kind of make a brownish tone. That turned kind of green. There, put it with the magenta and that turned it brown. But it's a different brown than the brown that came with it. And I only need uh, like three, three dabs of brown. Hardly any. There we go. Just like that. Now we've got the little tray that the, that the light is on. I might even take a little bit of that brownie tone and drop a bit of it up in here. Just to give us some of those little shadowy bits that happen. But not too much there because that, whoops, I say I'm going to let you keep that there to see and I moved it. So now I need to get, whoops, not a dirty brush. Let's go ahead and grab the orange. We're going to have that bright glow down here. We're going to grab some of the magenta with the orange and we're going to work it around and let it blend in. Just like that. Sort of work it up just a bit, coming up this edge. Then we're going to grab some of that purple and we're going to work it down here into some of the orange for our shadows, just like that. You know, like I said, we're not being slaves to it. It's not going to be a perfect representation of this, but it's going to be pretty close. You're going to know that you did it from this picture. I need to get that out from under my arm. Oh, that's looking cool. I need some more of the purple. And some more of the magenta that's like a clean spot. It doesn't have any orange in it. There we go. So now we're going to grab some of that little bit more plain purple without so much of the other colors in it. I want to get that right up here at the top. Now that's a lot, it should be a lot darker. So we're going to see how well we can glaze in colors or overlay them. There we go. It's looking pretty good so far. Now, when we go out, I'm slipping out onto the sky just a little bit. I think I might dry it and do some pen work on this. I'm not sure. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll keep it as a watercolor. There we go. I'm going to take a little touch of the black, I think, into that purple to make it really dark. Oh yeah, right up here, round the edges. The light is much more concentrated down low. It's not, it's really not light up there at all. That light just is glowing down here. And to make it feel like it's really glowing, you need to have that dark up above. So these colors are kind of opaque in that they will sort of go over the top. 
Look at that. And then I want the lightest, lightest, brightest yellow right along that edge. And put a little bit of it right in here. Kind of mix in a bit. We're getting it, aren't we? I'm really quite pleased with how that's coming together. You see, even though I am i don't know what I'm really doing with watercolor here, I see that that's actually really too dark inside. I'm going to see if that orange will brighten that up just a smidge. Look at that. We brightened up right away. That's too heavy right there. Needs to be lightened up. The framework that's holding that up is not as heavy as I made it. Now I can take some more of that orange and just drop some of the brighter orange right in there. That flame got a little bit out of control. That's part of my problem. I got some dark color in on my flame. There. Up. Oh, there we go. Now I need to let that dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling him in. And yes, you can see some of the variations here. So I may put the olive in for his shirt. I'm going to try and leave that little edge of light along his, along his face. This ear just disappears into the shadow. So I don't know. Hmm. Bring that right up to the edge. Or should we go ahead and just, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do it in silhouette. Just do it in the silhouette because it's quicker and I think it'll be more effective. easier you know and I'm all about making this easy and fun and I hope that you're enjoying this and if you are make sure to click that subscribe button share this with your friends and if you're interested in joining the ATC Club make sure that you click below for all the information about the ATC Club and all of the other artists that are designers for the Art Sherpa ATC Club. Let's see, I need to rotate this, get a smaller brush. Well, actually I can put the black in for his arm. I'm going to have to do a little refining for his uh, sleeve. There we go. And for around the fingers, I, I don't want to mess with that too much. Let's get this just in that much. And then we'll work about getting his. Wow, I kind of like his arm being that slightly lighter gray or lighter black. That's maybe just working in some of his wrinkles that way, just keeping it dark. Well, if I'm doing that, I probably could put a little bit of this olive green in there. Work his sleeve out just a smidge. Oh, 
How's that? So if you are already a member of the ATC Club, what do you think of these videos? What do you think of the design team videos and how, you know, how helpful are they to you? Do they give you any ideas? Do they give you, you know, real ideas of things to do? Or are they just kind of fun to watch and you're not too worried about whatever other people are doing because you're going to do your own thing no matter what anyway? Ooh, look how fine I could get with that. I like that. This filbert, I am getting just the tiniest fine little lines. I like that. Just getting his, getting his little knuckles up there where his hand is holding on. I am going to darken up his arm a little bit here. There we go. We'll look at that. I will grab a little bit of this blue and kind of work it in a little bit right up to his arm, but then work it across so it looks like it's all supposed to be there that way. And it doesn't look like I stopped right at the edge of his head, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> and up to his arm, because I don't want it to look like I was worried about running into him, which I was, but I don't want it to look like I was worried about it. All right, so we are going to grab I grabbed a number two micron. I'm going to use it to kind of firm up that little tray, that line there. bit of the hand, more just sort of breaking it down into knuckly bits more instead of fingers for sure. There we go. And I just want to firm up around his arm just a little bit and his sleeve. And across that shoulder. I'm just outlining. I'm not really, I'm not doing any new lines. These lines are all lines that are already there. So there we go. I'm not going to outline around the balloon. I like it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little SB on here. Just like that. Looks like a tag hanging off of his shirt. So how'd I do? What do you think, guys? I'm pretty excited about that. I hope you are too. If you're interested in the Art Sherpa ATC Club, make sure that you've clicked down below for more information. And don't forget to check out all of the other artists that are involved in the design team. Thank you so much. And as always, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon.
Bye-bye.